Hi, so now let's have a look at the uncapacitated facility location. Oh, so the idea now is that we have a collection of clients that we have to be to serve um, using facilities that we again locate at any and candidate locations. So you can see in this picture here that these light color blues are, are candidate locations and these orange points are our clients or places that must be served. And now what we take into account is not only the cost of opening the facility, but also a cost associated with serving uh, the demand at the client. And serving the client with the facility J has this cost CIJ and we pay FJ um, for just opening the facility. So our objective is basically to decide where to locate facilities in a way that when you look at the combination opening and service costs, um, this is minimized. So basically, this could be one possible solution in which you locate J3 and J1, so two facilities only, and then serve these elements, these demand points like so, being six partially served by J3, partially served by J1. But the number of facilities is is a, a the variable decision variable. So you can have, depending on how it translates the 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 balance between open costs for opening and costs for service, you might have either a really um, capillarized network in which you have uh, several of these facilities scattered out, and each of them, you know doing their local covering, like so. Or what you can have is less facilities and with a much wider radius of service. And what is going to de determine the balance between these two situations is whether installing is cheaper or transporting is cheaper or serving is cheaper. So this is a, it's it's the underlying model in many uh, supply chain design problems, and the formulation goes very similar to what we'll be seeing. The difference now, because it's a mixed integer program, we have a decision of locating the facility, which we're gonna model as a binary variable, and we also have this now continuous variable that we model as being the fraction of the demand being served. Um, so that means that we inst so that means that all of these variables are, are bounded to between zero and one, but they are continuous variables, um, and they are so just because of our option. Um, it has an impact on the quality of the formulation, as we're going to discuss in the next video and and a bit more later on in the course. Um, but you can see that um, with these two variables, basically my model um, looks like so. So this is for the first time a mixed integer objective function. And what we have here is a, a parcel that represents a fixed cost. And another that represents a variable cost. So fixed cost in a sense that you have to pay that to have a facility located. And this is proportional to the demand you satisfy. So cost for locating and costing for satisfying the demand. So this first constraint is basically telling when I look at all the facility J's and what they are, the, the fraction of the demand they are satisfying of node I, that sum has to add to 100%. So it means that when I look at a node I, I can have a flow, say, with 30% from this J1, and I can have a flow with 70% from this J2. And what that constraint says is that x11 um, one, one plus x12 one, two, x12 one, two equals 1. In this case, 0 0.3.0.7 0 .0 equals 1. All right. This constraint, on the other hand, it models, it models a logic behind the problem. So the logic that is is representing is the logic that you can only serve a node i uh, from using facility located at J if that facility 
has been actually located. So this constraint is basically working like this. Um, it's telling us that if y j is 1, then it means that the sum of all i's x i j has to be less or equal than m, being m the number of clients. So this is saying that you can think of this being it can send 100% from J, it can send 100% to client 1, it can send 100% to client 2, it can send 100% to client 3 because it's uncapacitated. And by doing so, if you take 100% for each client, the maximum you can have is just one facility with satisfying all clients with 100% meaning that this will add up to being the number of clients. This is, by the way, we use this notion of, of fraction because otherwise, we'll, if, we, this, if these were to be actual demand values and you don't have a capacity, you will have to have a, you know sufficiently large numbers here to make sure this thing, um, this, this constraint works as, as should. Um, and even though you know having big M's, sufficiently large M numbers is, is a valid strategy, it should be avoided whenever possible for numerical reasons and for reasons we're going to discuss more uh, in the next lecture. So that's kind of how it works. Um, so if y is 1, it allows me to use that facility to satisfy the demand, the demand of every client, potentially every single client. Now, as soon as y now is 0 and there is no decision to locate a facility there, then we are saying that whatever gets sent to all clients from that facility has to be less or equal than zero, which combined with the non-negativity condition forces basically x i j to be zero for all for that j and for all i in m. So that facility does not satisfy any demand, and that's a uh, that's a really important mechanism that we're going to use over and over and over again in, in mixed integer programming um, that models this notion that you have to have you have to pay a fixed cost in order to be able to use the recourse the resource sorry okay so that's it so that's the uncapacity facility location very important uh, example in in supply chain management um, Another important one, which is now centering production planning, is uncapacitated uh, lot sizing. So we talked about lot sizing when we talked about linear programs. Uh, the difference was that we didn't have the, the fixed cost associated with the production. So basically, we are augmenting the lot sizing problem to its more traditional variant, in which if you want to produce, you have to pay a fixed cost to start production. It can be, for example, suppose that your production depends on specific uh, specific technical labor or maybe you need to rent equipment, um, which is quite common, especially if talking about construction and, and typically construction companies, they don't own all their fleet of equipment. They typically rent them uh, on, on a by-project basis. So we can think of these fixed costs as, as these costs that have to be paid in order to start the production. It can be also set up costs. Um, sometimes you have to make modular changes in your production equipment to produce a specific type of product. Um, anyway, there's many ways that this is the case. And everything else is the same as we saw before. So we have a demand per period, we have a production cost per period, and we have a holding cost per period. These might or might not change uh, per period. Basically, the, the most important thing here is, is that this and this change. Because then what you're doing is, is shifting your production to exploit uh, demands, uh, to exploit different, well, in case the, these two, to exploit more um, attractive costs, production costs, while making sure you're satisfying the demand. And the way you can travel in time with your production, send a production from the past to the future is by means of having inventory, just like we've seen before. So the uncapacity, uncapacity lot sizing then looks like this. In this case, we're going to use this big M. 
So and, uh, a big M is 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 um it's a technique, a modeling technique in mixed integer program that allows us to to work out that um mechanism that allows only to produce so a variable is only allowed to take a variable different than zero than zero if a related variable is taken value one and you use these big m's but the problem with them as we're going to see in the next video and later on as well is that um they might compromise the quality of your formulation which means that it might compromise your solution times and the performance of your algorithm but in this case, um, we'll define X and S just like we did before, an amount produced and an amount stored. And in addition, we have this variable YT that doesn't really have much of a, a concrete meaning. Basically, what it says is that whether you did any production at purity. So so if production occur, occurs, then, then that variable indicates that it, it was the case because we need that um, to, to capture the effect of adding the fixed cost for the production. And the model itself, it's just like the model we seen before um, for lot sizing. The only difference is this additional constraint here. Uh, when we talked about lot sizing, we basically had this time inventory balance constraint. Um, and now what we adding is this constraint here that works exactly the same as in the uncapacitated facility location. But in this case, now what I'm doing, what we have to do is to say that we have this, because production here is considered as, as absolute values, they're not relative to the demand numbers. So they can be 10, 20, 50, 500. We use this thing that, that kind of plays the role of being infinity in a sense that if x if y is one and because x is not capacitated is uncapacitated then you can take any value between zero and infinity hopefully not infinity because otherwise the model is unbounded um but if this is zero then multiplying this proxy for infinity by zero actually gives us zero because it's a finite scalar and then x is not allowed to take any value. And once x wants to take a value greater than zero, it makes this become one and we capture the cost in the objective function. Um, so ideally, if this was a capacitive lot sizing problem, then instead of using this n here, this could simply be the capacity, the production capacity in period t. And, and it would work exactly the same. So it would be, x is less or equal than capacity if the capacity is available and x is less or equal than zero if the capacity is not available. So it will be exactly the same model with only this being replaced by the capacity, uh, the production capacity, All right? But here it is, very, very, very straightforward once we build uh, the knowledge from, from the previous models as well. Um, this is it in terms of examples. I think that gives you a very good uh, collection of examples that have all the special, most of the special features you'll see in mixed integer programs and integer programs in mixed integer programs. Um, and we'll have a chance to practice with a few more in the exercise sessions. But for now, we'll stop here. And then in the next video, we're going to look into the notion of good formulations. What makes a mixed integer programming formulation good? Or integer? And, and how, how do we compare, once we have two com formulations available, how do we compare them in, in terms of saying which one is better? So, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.